Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate everyone being here this morning. It's good to see the Burks. They have been friends of Janice and I's for a long time. They're much younger than we are, but I've known them for a very long time. You know, I was made for a mission. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You know, I hope that over the last few weeks that we have learned the fact that life is a preparation for eternity. God wants us to do four things. He wants us to worship. You remember we talked about that, knowing and loving God. He wants us to have fellowship, learning to love each other. Discipleship, learning to become like Jesus. If you remember we studied that we are made to be like Jesus. Ministry, learning to serve others and share the gospel with others. That brings us to the fifth purpose. The fifth purpose, it's really the only purpose that we can only do on earth. We were made for a, for a mission. Jesus once prayed in John chapter 17 verse 18 in the same way that you gave me a mission in the world, I give a mission I give them a mission in the world. John 17, verse 18. Notice the phrase. Look at that phrase, in the world. You know, last week we talked about how we are to have a ministry in the church. We also need a mission in the world. A ministry is to believers. A mission is to non-believers. As the Father has sent me, I also send you, John 20 and verse 21. My mission is evangelism. My fifth purpose is evangelism. Evangelism, brethren, is simply sharing the good news about Jesus. And God says, once you understand the good news, I want you to pass it along to others. I want you to share the good news. Well, when you see the phrase good news or the word gospel in the Bible, it's a translation of the Greek word egevilon. We get our word evangelism from this word, and it's the good news. Once I know the good news that God loves me in spite of my sin, that Jesus died to pay for my sins, that I am forgiven when I turn from sin and confess his name and be buried in baptism for the remission of sins. And here's one of the keys. Learn to trust him and to obey his commands. That Jesus sets us free and that God has a purpose. He has a purpose and a plan for my life and your life. And then God wants me to pass it on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news. There's our phrase, brethren, to the poor. Now just what is that good news? He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set the liberty those who are oppressed. Luke 4, verse 18. Liberty, freedom, God wants to set people free. Where am I supposed to share the gospel? Where am I supposed to share the good news? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, Acts 1, verse 8. Look at the word witnesses. God's not looking for defense attorneys and you know he doesn't we don't have to defend God 
And he's not looking for salesmen. You don't have to sell God. He is looking for our witnesses. What's a witness? It's someone who just says what they have seen. I saw this and I saw that. That's all I know. And that's all God is looking for. He says, I just want you to tell people what's happening and happened to you. Tell people what I've done in your life. Tell them about the differences that I have made in your heart. Where? I start at home to the people close to me. I go to the people nearby. Why does God want us to do this? Why do you think he wants us to do this? Because people are bound. People are enslaved. They are not free. And God is building a family of free people. He wants more and more people to be free, to be his children, to love him, to glorify him, to spend eternity with him. He wants people to be set free from addictions, from past hurts, from sin and selfishness, and also from Satan. That's why Jesus came. He came. God has chosen you and he's chosen me to complete the mission of Jesus Christ. He's saying, I want you to finish it. Maybe you've heard the story. I read this story about Jesus returning to heaven after dying on the cross. And you know, and, and he had risen again. An angel comes to Jesus and he says, okay, now what? Who's going to fulfill the mission now that you're here? And Jesus said, I left my followers to carry on the mission. And the angel says, you're what? Your followers? You know, they're not very reliable. What if they don't get it done? What's plan B? And Jesus says, there is no plan B. We're it. Being on a mission to join with Jesus and setting captives free is the greatest privilege, the greatest privilege that we've ever been given. We are in and on making history. You know, three places to be on a mission. Number one, I am made for a mission here locally. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I must share with those in my world. Where does your mission start? It starts right here at home. Return to your own home, house, and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him, Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Why don't we do this? We think that people aren't interested in spiritual issues, but the polls and the surveys say that Americans are more interested in spiritual things now than they were 10 years ago. You know, the research, there was a research group that's called Barama, and research group, and they did a report, and they released it this last year. 85% of all adults say that their religious faith is very important in their life. The most popular topic of conversation is the content of movies or television programs. Two out of every three adults talk about TV or movies during a typical week. The next most popular items of conversation are money and sports, but listen to this, listen to this. 49%, 49% of adults spend time each week talking about morals and 42% spend time talking about spiritual issues. An estimated 90 million adults talk about religious matters with family or friends in an average week. And I can tell you just a week or so ago, Janice and I stopped at a little market at the end of Airline Road, and I went in to make a purchase, and the young lady behind the counter looked at me, and she said, do you know anything about the Bible? I said, a little bit. And she had questions. 
and she asked me those questions, and I found that very interesting. But an estimated 90 million adults talk about religious matters with family or friends in an average week. People are interested. Let's tell them how much God has done for us. There are thousands of ways, thousands of ways that you can witness. You can give away tapes or CDs. You can give away books. You can give away tracts. You can invite people to church, etc. Now, why in the world, why in the wide world should I take the time to do that with somebody else? Here's why. It's the reason that your heart's still beating. Think with me for just a minute. I want you to really think about this. Why doesn't God take us to heaven the moment that we become believers? Have you ever thought about that? We can worship in heaven. We can fellowship in heaven. We will be like Jesus in heaven. We will have a ministry of serving God in heaven. But what we can't do is tell people who aren't free how they can be free. What we can't do is share the good news with people who don't know it yet. The only reason we're left on this earth after we have come to Christ is because God wants us to share the good news with people who haven't heard. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. Jesus Christ was stretched out on the cross dying a cruel death and he says this is how much i love you and all the people you work with and all your relatives that haven't been sent that you haven't taught the gospel to yet and all the people in your neighborhood i love them this much we don't want the seabury church of christ to grow for our benefit we want it to grow because more people need to be set free. And how can we help more people meet Jesus, be forgiven, and be set free? Become passionate followers of Christ? Right question. When we forget that we were made for a mission, when we fail to evangelize, we're saying to the world, hey, I'm in. Best of luck to you. Hope you make it. But that's not the spirit of this church. I believe that all of us here at the Seabury Church of Christ are deeply interested in spreading the gospel of Christ. Let's make 2023 the year that we grow. Why do we want to do this? Aren't we busy enough? We care because Jesus cares. We want to go to heaven and take as many people with us as we can. Number one, I am made for a mission here locally. Number two, I am made for a mission there regionally. It's not enough for us to care about the people who are around us. We must dare to reach beyond our own little world. Love demands that we move beyond our comfort zone to people with different backgrounds, different educations, different languages, different cultures. You will be my witnesses in all Judea and Samaria, Acts 1, verse 8. Our mission has such eternal consequences. Heaven and hell hang in the balance. And that we must be willing to take risks across different cultures to get the message out. If you had the cure for cancer, you'd be shouting it out. You know, it, it would be criminal to keep it a secret. But we have something even more important than that, the way to eternal life. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 22. I don't just seek to reach people who are like me. We build bridges, not walls. We must dare to reach beyond our world. When you read about Jesus, it's pretty clear, it's pretty clear that Jesus cared for the underdog, the people in, this, in his world 
that others wanted to ignore. The powerless, the poor, the left behind, the prisoners, the orphans, the widows, the aged, the mentally ill, the social outcasts, the sick, and look at the 12 apostles that he chose. If you really looked at those men, those weren't outstanding men. They were men who had a lot of issues in many circumstances. But he chose them. I can imagine that if Jesus was physically walking on this earth today, that he'd be hanging out with people, caring for people that most others turn their back to. Sometimes we just need a little push to get going. And here's something that absolutely anybody can do. It's just a little step. Just a little step for you to reach beyond yourself. And this can get the momentum going for you if you're kind of stuck. I met with some people here in Seabree, mostly by phone lately, but I've also tried to get around and get myself known here in the community a little bit. I have meetings scheduled for later on next week. But I also met with a lady at Stonebridge in Henderson, Kentucky. It was Danny, I talked to him about us going on a mission of trying to help feed some people that need to be fed. We gathered groceries for him, and he made mention the fact that it'd be a good idea if we did that, but it would be great if we had a sack that had our name on it. They could get in touch with us and know where it came from. I went to Stonebridge, and believe it or not, Stonebridge is making us some nice canvas totes, putting our name on it, and they've donated them to the church. And I want us to gather and to bring perishable food items. Some of you may want to take more than one and bring the bag full back to the church, and we're going to distribute these groceries to help needy families in our own community and families that you may know uh, where you live. This is an incredible opportunity for absolutely anybody who participates. See, we're going to let our community know that we care and possibly through that, we will help the church to grow, that we're on a mission. One day we're going to stand before God and he's going to do an audit of our lives. And he's going to judge if we really learned to love or if it was just all talk. This Bible says that one day Jesus is going to separate people into two groups, the sheep and the goats, and he's going to say, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me, Matthew 25, verses 35 through 36, and also verse 40. When you give a cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty, when you give food to people who are hungry, when you give a shoebox of gifts, Jesus says it's going, you know, it's giving to me also. Being a follower of Jesus means healing hurts and helping others. It's love. And I'm not going to kid you, if you start living out your own mission in the world, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you time, energy, and effort, and money, and maybe even your privacy at times. But if you, it will break you out of your self-centeredness and earn you eternal rewards. I am made for a mission here, there, and you know what's coming next, don't you? I am made for a mission everywhere globally. I dare to reach my world. I dare to reach beyond my world. I dare to reach the whole world. God cares about the whole world. You will be my witnesses to the end of the earth, Acts 1, verse 8. Jesus once said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. If you're not fishing, you're not following. He says to his followers, go everywhere, because I want the whole world to hear the good news. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, Matthew 28, verse 19. You know, today the world is smaller than it's ever been. It is literally smaller than it's ever been with ships and planes and Internet and email. The world is smaller than ever. You can communicate to all over the world from your home, from your den, from your bedroom. 
our mission of videoing our Sunday services and people are sharing these videos with others and we're spreading the gospel of Christ. We can literally go around the world from our own homes now. It has never been easier for us to seek and reach the whole world. The Great Commission is your commission. One day the Great Commission will be the Great Completion. So join God in helping to set people free. I know that nothing will just start your spiritual life, jumpstart your spiritual life, like experiencing a short-term mission project. I urge you to participate in a short-term mission project as soon as possible. You'll get more joy, more vision, and more closeness to God. It could very well be one of the most significant events of your life. If anyone wants to keep his life safe, he will lose it. If anyone gives up his life because of me, he will save it. Matthew 16, verse 25. I am made for a mission here, there, and everywhere. If you care, we must share. Have you completed your mission? Not if you're still alive. If you're still alive, your mission is not completed. There is somebody here, there, and everywhere for you to teach. I want you for just a second to think about this. You've got four possible responses. Moses, you remember Moses, when God approached him, he said, who, me? Jonah, he didn't want to go preach. He didn't like those people. Not me. Habakkuk, why me? But Isaiah, send me. You will never regret saying, send me to God, because God will use you to set people free. A point to ponder. My goal to go to heaven and to take as many people with me as possible. A verse to remember you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 verse 8. A question, a question to consider. What steps should I take to share my faith here, there, and everywhere? If you would, for just a second, and we're fixing to close, would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I do so much want to fulfill the purpose for which you made me. Today, I embrace that fifth purpose my mission to tell others. I want you to use me anytime, any place, any way, here, there, and everywhere. I want to bring others to you so you can set them free. I want to be a part of what you're doing in the world. I want to build my life around your eternal purpose. In Christ's name, amen. If you're here today and have never confessed his name, and been baptized for the remission of sins. Think seriously about doing that today. If you have already done that, but are living your life controlled by this world, come this morning and ask him for forgiveness and to take up your place again as one of his children. And then strive to be obedient to him. If you have need of the gospel invitation, won't you come while together we stand and sing. Is patiently drawing near entrance with.